it's time to get ready for winter. So I'll explain what all this is after the intro. So my ninth gen LTZ has the 18-inch uh, wheels. They're uh, 235 50 18s. And I had been, uh, I got a, they're back over here. I got uh, my winter tires that I've had for a few years. I ran on my old 12 Impala over 225-60 16s. Um, I did run them on this car last winter. It turns out I... Probably should have did this before, but uh, I'll flash on the screen. Um, the uh, total circumference or the diameter of the wheel, there's quite a discrepancy between the 18s and the 16s. So, um, I just sold those to my stepson. We're going to be throwing them on the 09 Impala. Because his, uh, the 09's got the 225-60-16s. -60 -60s, so there won't be any issues with the speedometer. Um, putting them on a LTZ or an SS. Um, you're either going to have to go in with a Tech 2 and change your um, settings for what size tire. Or what I'm going to be doing... I just purchased a brand new set of 17 inch steelies got these off ebay um i was looking at getting those uh 17 inchers like my old um impala lt had but uh could not locate a decent set for a good price these steelies were 85 bucks a piece brand new got them off ebay uh got four of them they're in these uh i don't know why they packed them in a trd box but i'm gonna unbox them and before i get my new tires mounted to them i'm gonna jack up the car and just make sure they said they're five by 115s and they're 17 by six and a halfs i thought i read somewhere on here that they said five by 115 i don't know where i saw that but i'm gonna verify but uh manufactured date of 228 22 um also i'm not gonna i'm not gonna roll with them bare i'm gonna throw these hubcaps on there they look pretty damn similar to my ltz wheels you can tell they're pretty damn similar so uh the tire i'm gonna go with the standard what the Impala LTs come with is a 225-55-17. I'm going to go with a 215-60-17. Uh, they very, very closely match the diameter of the 235-50-18s. Again, I'll flash that on the screen. So in that instance, the uh, I'm not going to have to go in and screw with the settings. And I'm not going to mess up my, my uh, speedometer, odometer, all that, which I probably did last year running them 16s on here. There, uh, there's quite a discrepancy. So I'll flash all that on the screen. So uh, I went ahead and bought four new TPMS sensors. Oh crap, just dropped that one on the floor. There's the part number. And I'm gonna put them on myself. I have a, a Vel stem puller. And I have this Rue Glide I've had for a while. I put it in a Windex bottle just to screw it a little around here to make it easier to pull them in there. I'm gonna, before I have my new tires mounted, I got some of this ceramic 
for black cars that I had for my old 12 Impala. I'm going to hit the outside and inside of the, I mean, the face and back here with some of that just to repel some of the salt and all that. So naturally we need to put this Impala up in the air and uh, right now the normal accoutrements, wheel chocks, jack stands, floor jack. Um, I went ahead and bought this uh, little crossbeam from uh, Harbor Freight. Mainly got it to uh, put the Chevy Cruze in the air because that car doesn't have like a front subframe. And back where the rear suspension cross member is, there's like a tunnel for the extra, like the battery and all that auto start shits back there. So this is realistically the only way I can get that car in the air with a hydraulic floor jack. Um, normally, I've showed it on my channel a million times. I go in under here and uh, go up on the, uh, the front cross member right in the middle, put it in the air. Put the jack stands on the cross member behind the wheels and in the back going under the back find the center of the suspension uh where the two where the uh, a arms go into jack it up there put the jack stands on the frame rails well we're gonna go i'm gonna go in with this center it in the middle put it out right on the frame rail throw her up in the air put the jack stands right on the frame rails uh first thing you got to do chalk chalk your back wheels Set your e-brake. You don't want this thing rolling forward or back. So let's unbox this thing. Hobo freight. Oh, wow, there's a second box in here. Daytona two-ton crop. Self-professed self -professed, uh, shade trees. Don't read the instructions. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, look at that. She slides. She got some uh, safety chains. So yeah. Maybe I do need to read the directions. There should be, oh, there it is. Never mind. There's a pin. This is what I was looking for. This just plops in the middle. Yep. So, I'm gonna take the pad off the jack and plop this in place of it. My pad is, yeah, it's bolted in there, so, yep. And this has the same size bolt as my jack pad. Nice. So, let's find that. Find the right Allen for that. This should just screw right in there. Yeah, there's no bolts or nothing back here. Nope. Yep, so. So, I got a 10 millimeter hex key. This should take it off. I might have to get my impact gun. This thing's so damn rusted on here. I think that's what I'm going to need to do. Squirt some blaster in there. At least it'll work with that. We're going to try that. Some blaster. 
blaster on here. Well, y'all don't need to watch this. All right, so it's out. So here, now well, let's lower it. Let's get back in the frame here. So we'll just set this to the side. Maybe clean, <laughs> clean up some of the rust on here. Oh, wow that out of the way this jack is an Arcan it's a assembled in China with US parts I've had I think I've had this man probably six or seven years now it's uh, Arcan like the US made Arcans are like a thousand bucks this I think I paid 249 from Nor Northern Tool it's a damn good jack. So, we're gonna. Oh, is that gonna. Oh, that'll hold. Yeah. Just gonna make sure we're centered in there. Find the bit, find my adapter. Everything went flying when I took it off of the impact gun. Make sure this is threading in there. Might have to take the sleeve out of there because I don't know what that's threading in there. Yeah. Okay, so there's a sleeve that goes down in here. And I'm going to remove it because it's not engaging the threads on my Arcan jack. No, I still don't think it's engaging the threads. Okay, there it goes. Yep, good and snug now. Okay, it's all the way tight. I still have some wiggle room. These slide in and out. The pads rotate. So we should be able to get up under that. Up under that Impala. So I measured we're approximately 86 inches between the wheels. Or between, you know, yeah from the back of the front wheel to the front of the back wheel. I went about 43 over and we're kind of about here on the door handle. So that's where we're gonna slide under. So I noticed these pads were all the way up and I rolled them down just to give me some room up under here. So we're just going to slide her right under here. So we're going to get these pads right on that there frame rail right there. And I'll make sure my jack is ready to go here. Now I'm going to put the rear jack stand right here. Right here is where I'm going to set the rear jack stand. Uh, the front one I might there might be some room up there I'm gonna go I might just put it up under the cross member like I normally do but uh, let's uh, let's go back a little ways here so watch how that whole side of that car comes up oh and I am chocked I'm chocked how we're doing here. Look at that. That is beautiful. Right dead center. And you know I could slide these. 
I could slide them out a little bit, but we're kind of we're kind of at the end here. So if I were to slide that end out, it'd be lopsided. They're both slid in the same amount. So that's what we're gonna do. And it seems to be raising them up pretty evenly. As you can see, now we're up off the ground. And I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the back. I'm gonna take the back one off. Um, yeah, I'm just looking under here. Making sure I'm not crunching the frame. But look at that. We are in the air. So here's the back. I'm gonna get the jack stand. That's where we want this one. I really only want the back up for right now. Since I'm just taking one wheel off. If I was going to do the, you know, change the tires out, I'd put both in. So here we go. I'm on jack stands. The back one there. With the front one there. Right on the front of the uh, frame rail there. We're sitting good and good and steady. We're off the ground. I'm gonna pull the back one. So this, I uh, it's a total digression here, but uh, when I after I got this car, I I dipped these wheels with dip your car's hyper dip. And it's just crap. I used probably more than I normally would and it's peeling and my front I'll show you this front one it's all peeling here it's just this stuff was crap going on it was really runny it just I mean it's not even really that shiny that's the only reason I got it because I was going for I wanted to do the glossy look like all in one so I got the piano black well, it turns out it was piano shit. I mean, it all tore up inside the lugs. I'll just, I'm gonna flash some pictures of my 12 Impala. I put, uh, I used anthracite gray Plasti Dip on those wheels. And I wanna say it lasted four, four and a half years. When I sold that car, I was having a bitch of a time peeling the stuff off, so I had to go buy the dip release. I don't know if I still have it, but uh, it's kind of like Goo Gone, essentially. It probably is rebranded re Goo Gone, but I had to use that to get all that old the dip off those wheels. That stuff was amazing. So, yeah, this spring, before I remount my... I'm getting new tires anyway. I'm going to peel off this hyper shit and uh, go with some genuine plasti dip and then go over it with glossifier just i had just a better overall experience with regular old plasti dip so anyway enough of my digression well oh that too and here was i was uh beating around the bush to get to i put tuner lugs on here on the back because they're black i probably could have went with just regular black lug nuts but uh so yeah i got the stupid chrome socket with it these are kind of shitty but and when I put my winter steelies on, I'm just going to go with the uh, stock acorns that I have put in these bags. I'm just going to throw them on there for the winter.
lug nuts always come off easy because I put anti-seize a little bit, just a little bit, and put a little on the face of the rotors. So let's grab one of the new rims. Rims, wheels, whatever you want to call them. Make sure this is a 5x115. Oh yeah, look at that. These are 5x115. I just wanted to make sure for myself that these were genuine. So that's a 1 and we'll just... There we go. They fit. I got my e-brake on so I'm not going to spin. But there we go, 17 inch steelies. So I went ahead and threw one of these hubcaps on there. I mean, it's pretty close. I'm going to go through the winter like that. It'll be... Let's hold it up against this. It ain't a exact match, but I mean, it looks kind of more like the uh, 10th gen Impala's uh, alloy wheels. Good enough for winter, and I like how the holes of the steelies line right up with the the spokes of the. I mean, how coincidental is that? Like <laughs> the holes line up perfectly with the spokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I can't stress enough if you're using an impact gun, don't crank on the lug nuts with the impact gun. Get them on just barely snug, put your car back on the ground, torque them to 100 foot pounds, and go in a star pattern. So I've uh, decided they fit on the back, they clear the calipers, I'm going to do the same for the fronts. So the main reason I'm checking the fronts is because next spring I'm going to be doing the police brake upgrade for the front wheels. That's the absolute main reason I wanted to get 17s for my winters. Finding out the other stuff about the speedometer being off was kind of accidental almost. Now I may be an idiot, but there is one thing I am not, sir, and that, sir, is an idiot. But, uh, so, when you do the big police brake upgrade, you cannot run 16s. You have to go 17s or larger, so those... 16 inch winter steelies I have would never never clear the brake calipers Basically, um, you're gonna have to wait till Till I do the upgrade. I'll explain the whole thing then but that's what I got planned for this and They at least clear the the stock calipers by a pretty good margin so I'm gonna trust what they say I mean the the 9c1s after 2012 came with 17 inch steelies and those wheels are rarer than hen's teeth they have the the threaded um, they're threaded here for those dog dish center caps these supposedly the eBay listing says they were from an equinox but they said they fit uh, Montes and Impalas, so I take that as, you know, all second and third gen W bodies from 97 to 16. So, and here's verification, these do fit front and back on this third gen W body, aka ninth gen Impala. So we're back on the ground, 
lug nuts are torqued to 100 foot pounds i went around twice um usually i would say recheck them after 500 miles but i'm thinking by next weekend i should have my new tires and i'll be putting those new rims on new wheels on let's say but this little crossbar is pretty slick i never 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 recommend you hold the car up with that you just use it to raise it and then you immediately put jack stands under it because no matter how good the jack is you're gonna blow the seal the hydraulic seals out of here that's the worst thing you could do so honestly get a jack get some jack stands get some wheel chocks um harbor freight sells some decent jacks i mean they aren't the greatest but for what they cost you know if you can get a couple of years out of them um i love this arcan i'll see if i can find a link to it from northern northern tool um love it it was i can't remember if i paid 249 or 349 it was a little more expensive than a hobo freight jack but worth every penny and then i got these from northern tool I think I'm gonna get my uh look at that. Oh wow. It's been a couple years since I've used this stuff. It's not squirting out so hot. I'm gonna go ahead and uh wax these up before I put the new valve stems on here. Wow, that really leaves a Oh, now she's spraying good. For those of you that don't know, I used to have a black 2012 Impala. Hence why I have black ceramic spray wax. So I'm going to just give it a good coat. Might do this every year before winter. Get some good protection on here. It's, it's supposed to last six months. Essentially, you just wet your microfiber towel, wipe it on, let it get hazy, and then you wipe it back off. So, make sure you get every goddamn little corner of this thing goosed up real good. I'll just take another microfiber after this haze is over and just buff her out. Buff the wood, buff the wood, buff the wood. Buff the wood, buff the wood, come on, buff the wood. Buff, 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 buff the wood. Now, let's take a take a peek at how shiny that thing is now. I'm gonna do all four of them. I'm gonna flip this around and do the inside there. Let's turn the camera. Get the inside, and then we'll leave this because you know the tire's gonna be sitting on there. So here we go, we're all polished up, waxed. Um, here's that part number again. 1359871. We got a
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the valve, the cap off. I'm going to insert it like this up through the bottom, attach my uh, puller. I'm going to see if you can see this on camera. I'm just going to goose this a little bit with some Rue Glide, just a little bit. I got to hold the bottle upside down because the damn thing is leaking. So we're just going to go, I got a little bit of that wax left there. Make sure that's dried off. I'll just, uh, oh, get my hand out of the way there. Just gonna sit just like this down against the flats of the wheel. So, yeah, I can't push her through. We need to, uh, need to get the puller. We just thread it on here. And, Try this. We in frame here. Let's see if we can get. Let's lower this down. See if we can. Uh, let's watch this. Go in there. Snap, and then she's in. So really that's all it is, all there is to it for getting your new uh, TPMS valve stem in there. And we just put the cap back on. Well, you know, the installer is going to have to take that back off anyway. We'll make sure we're seated in there good. And I think we are. Oh yeah, perfect. Yep, we're, we are in. Alright, so I'm going to do that four times. Should I time lapse it? Yeah, I'm gonna time lapse it. So here we go. Got my four wheels all waxed up. I got all my valve stems on. Now, all I gotta do Gonna order my tires from Tire Rack. I think I'm gonna do the mobile installation. I'm gonna have them come here and just install them. Uh, price is pretty competitive. Um, if I'm, I don't know, but I'm not gonna record him doing it. Maybe I'll take a snapshot of his van here. But uh, I'm going with uh, Bridgestone Blizzak WS90s. I'm normally a uh, general. I love general tires, but um, and I have. General Aldamax Arctic. Those are my other the 16s I have are General Aldamax or Altamax Arctics. Um, I don't know the the Blizzax are a newer model, and on tire racks comparison, they rank higher. They rank higher for wet traction and ice ice and snow traction. And the, the generals are a little bit older. I mean, and the, the ones I, I bought them in 2017, 2017, and they haven't updated that tire yet. And the Blizzax, I think, came, this latest model came out in 2020. So, and they're a little bit cheaper, too. But uh, Tire Rack, I've been getting my tires from them for, Christ, probably 25 years. Back when you saw the advertisements in the back of, like, Motor Trend and hot rod you know they had that that's i used to call over the fucking phone and order <laughs> pay by credit card over the phone um i could what i've done in the past is i have a distribution center in my city or in my metro area they give you a 40 dollars discount if you come pick up the tires yourself i've done that and i've taken them to walmart but uh now they offer um they have their own uh mobile tire shop so you order the tires you select the mobile delivery and then they bring the tires to you and they'll mount the wheels on the cars on the car too but i'm just going to have them i'm just going to have them mount them to my new wheels and not mount them on the car so we'll cut back in when i have those
here we go. It's the Sunday after, and I got my uh, new tires all mounted on the wheels. Um, I got my, I'll link this in the description, set the sensors. I think I'm just going to put my black lug nuts I had. I know they're all rusty, but they're going to be hiding behind wheel covers. And these don't have those stupid chrome caps on there. So that's why I'm not worried, A, about these looking like shit. Or B, they're easier to get off because those stupid chrome things won't swell up inside your your socket. I've had that happen. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I think I still have, yeah. I think I have a frush. What the fuck is a frush? A frush. Oh, well, see, I got two sevens, and two sevens beats a crush. Oh, oh, thank you. I think, I think, I still have one stuck in a socket. Well, uh, I think I'm going to go, I want to put some 303 on these, on the outsides of these tires, too, just to get them, put a little protection on there for the winter. But, uh, yeah, we're otherwise ready to throw them on here. I'm gonna mark, although I'm on the fence, I'm fairly certain I'm gonna be getting new tires. Yeah, these are getting pretty low. I'll put my depth gauge on there, but these aren't. And they're Goodyear Eagles. I freaking hate Goodyears. And I gotta say these, not impressed, even though these are even 50 series 18s, they handle worse than my 17s I had on my Impala LT. I, it's these stupid tires. So I'm going to mark them anyway, just so I know where they were. I think I had one, this sensor, I think the right front one was going bad. So All right, so I got some 303 protectant on the sidewalls. I didn't do the treads. I still have to scrub off that mold release, you know. I'm not too worried about throwing it on the treads, but man, they look nice with that 303. Um, wanted to mention real quick. So the guy from ASAP Tire showed up and he didn't have my tires with. So he had to run back to the warehouse and then he couldn't find him. I had, he called me back. I had to give him my order number. And then he found him. He came back. So he told me this happens quite a bit. Um, I guess Tire Rack owns ASAP Tire, but they're not like the same company. He said, when you order, there's a little comment section on the website. And he said in the comment section, type in, do not have tires, please bring tires. And then they'll, that'll remind the driver to pick up the tires at the warehouse. And I was like, well, what if I just went and picked them up myself? I could have saved 40 bucks doing that. He's like, yeah, you could do that too. He goes, either way. So that was the story behind that. Um, I, I'm going to do that again. Anyway, I love, that was awesome. He just pulled in my driveway. He had a jack and jack stands with if I wanted, you know, normally they mount them on the car, but I said, nah, I'm going to do it myself. And he was fine with that. Um, <laughs> he was telling me these wheels I bought were probably from China. And he said they don't put enough paint on them. He said they're made fine. It's just they don't put enough paint on them. So I, I think I was <laughs> right to put that uh, spray wax on there. So. We'll see how that goes. I'm not worried about it. I mean, honestly, if they start rusting, what's a can of spray paint? Two bucks at the freaking hardware store or at Home Depot. If they start rusting, I'll just throw some more paint on there. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna get to going with the uh, crossbar. I think I'm gonna move it closer to the front of the car because as you could see when I was, when I had it in the air last time, the front was sagging more you know because of the weight on the front so i'm gonna give that a try 
So let's go back on the time lapse. So here we go, got them lug nuts, torque to 100 foot pounds, I went around twice, I think those hubcaps look pretty nice. Not bad, not bad at all, I'll have to back this out of the garage and just get a long shot of it. Pretty close to the, I mean, you know, not identical, but pretty close. Okay, so now I'm going to go around, just check all the pressures with my gauge. I'll probably put them to 35. And then I'm going to go around and set the sensors. I will link this in the description. So checked all my pressures and we're good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set these uh, sensors. You're gonna wanna start, we're gonna start at the driver's side left and um, the turn signal will light up in each position to tell you which one to check. So first thing you gotta do, uh, throw on the ignition and you're gonna take your uh, lock and unlock buttons and hold them down at the same time after you turn the key on. So I'll do that. Uh, let's see here. Hold these down. Now it says tire learning active. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run over and make sure the doors are unlocked. Okay, we got the tire learning active. I'm not going to close my door now. Come over to the driver's side front. You'll see the turn signals illuminated. So you're going to hold this close to the valve stem. So it says TX. Now it honked, that means it got it. Now you'll see the passenger side front turn signals lit. And we're gonna do the same thing. Honked, now we're gonna go to the passenger side rear. You'll see the turn signals on. I got these aftermarket ones, but see, that one's not on and this one is. So. We'll go do this here. And now you'll see that's off and that's on. So now after this one, you're going to get two honks. And that means it's done. And now we can go back and look at the dash. Left front 35, right front 35, left rear 34, right rear 35. So we're set. So that's how you set your sensors. Let's back this out of the garage and just take a look at what she looks like. Not bad. Hell, I gotta say, I like the, those are uh, 60 series 17s. They look pretty damn good. Uh, 
up and over so we don't show the license plate. Get out of the way there. <laughs> Much of a shadow. So I'm going to go in and just goose a little fluid film on the bottom of the doors, kind of to touch up what I did last year. Um, I did a transmission. I changed 5.28 quarts of fluid. I think I'm going to do this again probably next weekend. Fluid looked kind of dirty for 80,000 miles. I uh, changed the oil with the uh, maximum, what is this? Oh, Valvoline Extended Protection. Um, Looked pretty normal after I did that flush last July. Um, that, I got to say that um, maximum protection, I used about, I think it consumed less oil than the uh, Valvoline Modern Engine that I've been advocating for for four years. There really wasn't, uh, it wasn't a lot in the catch can. And I, usually I'd be about a quarter quart down on the stick and it didn't even register. It didn't even look like I was, hardly anything off the needle. That could be too, because I have that, uh, um, the clean side separator on there too. That could be part of the reason too. But uh, I'm gonna, you know, going forward, I am gonna wholeheartedly recommend this oil for your 3.6. Get some winning endorsement for me. And um, this Dexron, full synthetic, I think this is six bucks a quart. I'll link it in the description. Um, this is a four quart jug. I bought a couple extras and I filled one of them to just a little over a quarter so I know how much to add. So I have five quarts here and then a 0.28 so I can do one more drain and fill. So anyway, I think I'm ready for winter. Um, that's usually all I really do to prep my car, I'll check, I'll probably go and check the, I got one of those little coolant testers somewhere in my junk. I should, I'm going to go test the strength of the coolant. I don't think I'm going to need to change it, but if I do, that'll be another thing. I got a video on how to do that, how to do a drain and fill, but yeah, we're all, I'm all waxed up. So this is what, uh, I forgot. I had a had a can of this and I ran out, so I went to uh, HD. Got a couple more cans. I'm going to uh, sell. Oh. I'm gonna go up under here. And you can, you know, this. I'm just gonna run a bead along here where I'm pointing. I'm just gonna go down both sides of the car. And then I'm gonna get. I still got some left from last year you can kind of still see i i got some residue left on the bottom of my doors it's kind of grimy but i'm gonna just a little zip there and i'll probably do it to this car too that's kind of my you know seeing as i don't have a, a spray gun or really the <laughs> i really don't want to crawl under the car and spray the whole damn thing. I think just the, the trouble spots, spray with this. Lanolin has a pleasant smell. <laughs> Dog's licking it off the cars. Ah, oh, shit. How did that taste there, pal? <laughs> Let's see if I can get this up under here. You can kind of see where I, I just went straight down on the outside and on the inside. I'm going to go to the other side. I think I'm going to crawl up under the back and kind of spray the back of the bumper. Just do some problem areas. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know, I was thinking of doing maybe the underside of the hood, but usually you get hit with rock chips. Oh yeah, I forgot, I did my 
touch-ups and I forgot to do the Lanka on that. I'll link to that Lanka. It smooths out the blobs of your touch-up paint. Forgot to do that. I'll do it next spring. But uh, so, we're supposed to get uh, one to three inches of snow tomorrow. So I'm ready, good to go. Quit licking that stuff off the car, you weirdo. Get. <laughs> Get. No, <laughs> I don't know if this stuff's, I gotta read the directions if it's non-toxic for dogs. I probably shouldn't have brought her out here. Oh Christ. Get back. So anyway, I um, hope you got a laugh out of this. Um, tell me down below how you get your car for ready for winter. Anything I've uh, missed. Oh yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it. I got new wiper blades. Got that ready. And uh, headlights are a year old. They're in decent shape. As I say, that might be another thing. Check your headlight bulbs. Make sure your lenses are polished. But anyways, uh... Thanks for uh, coming along with me on this journey. Um, make sure you uh, hit the thanks button down below if you care to support my channel at all. And as always, give me a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Later.